Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Previously, we learned how it's possible to cut DNA at specific sequences using restriction enzymes. These enzymes leave sticky ends, short pieces of single-stranded DNA that can weakly bind to a complementary sequence. So, when we mix together two pieces of DNA with matching sticky ends, they stick together long enough for a ligase to come and connect them permanently. In this way, it's possible to produce recombinant DNA sequences by cutting and pasting together sequences with matched sticky ends. But we weren't super happy with the technology. For one thing, the method that we described was not directional. When we inserted a piece of DNA into a vector, we had no control over which direction it attached. We also had a problem with the vector closing in on itself, because those sticky ends match too. Finally, we noted that it's a big pain to choose the right restriction enzyme. What if the plasmid doesn't have the right restriction sequences? Well, now it's time to take our cloning game to the next level. Let's talk about biobricks. A biobrick is nothing but a piece of DNA on a plasmid with standard restriction sites. Every biobrick is required to have four standard restriction enzyme sites, two at the front and two at the back. ECOR1, XPA1, SPE1, PST1. These restriction sites don't appear anywhere else on the plasmid, and they don't appear anywhere inside the biobrick sequence itself. The standard is enforced by the biobrick registry, and they have hundreds of different ready-made plasmids that conform. So already, this has made our life easier. We don't have to go hunting for the right restriction enzyme. We know which enzymes to use. But the real magic of biobrick cloning begins when we start putting biobricks together. So let's try it. Here are two biobrick plasmids. We're going to cut this biobrick, which we call the insert, and paste it into the other plasmid, which we call the vector backbone. In this case, we want to put the new biobrick before or in front of the existing biobrick, which we call a prefix insertion. Let's get started by cutting open the vector backbone. For this, we'll use two enzymes, ECOR1 and XBA1. ECOR1 cuts at the sequence GAA, TTC, and leaves a specific sticky end. XBA1 cuts at the sequence TCT, AGA, and leaves a different sticky end. By cutting with two enzymes, we've produced two different sticky ends that don't match. These two short sequences don't complement each other, which means that they won't stick together and a ligase won't connect them. This is already good news for us because it means that the vector won't close back in on itself while we're waiting for the new insert to come along. After we digest the plasmid, we'll normally clean up the DNA with a purification column. This tiny little piece of DNA in between the ECOR1 and the XBA1 sites is too small to bind to that column, so it just gets washed away. Now let's go and get the insert. For this, we also use two restriction enzymes, ECOR1 and SPE1. ECOR1 cuts at the sequence GAA-TTC and leaves a specific sticky end. SPE1 cuts at the sequence ACT-AGT and leaves a different sticky end. By using two different enzymes, we give each insert a clear front and back. Each sticky end will only bind to its complement. You'll notice that this plasmid has been cut into two large pieces. We need to separate the insert sequence that we want from the rest of the plasmid that we don't. And this can be done, for example, using a gel purification. Finally, we mix the insert and the vector backbone together. Let's see what happens. Matching sticky ends stick together. That means the ECOR1 overhang of the insert hits the ECOR1 overhang of the vector, just like we might expect. Now look at this on the other side. The XBA1 and the SPE1 enzymes have produced matching sticky ends. Even though the six base pair recognition sequences are different, the four base pair sticky ends are the same. That means that they will pair together and become sealed by a ligase, leaving a continuous piece of DNA. The result is a kind of a, a hybrid restriction site. It looks like XBA1 on the front and like SPE1 on the back, but importantly, it doesn't actually match either sequence. Once the two pieces are ligated together, the restriction site is effectively gone. 
That sequence won't be recognized by XBA1 or SPE1 ever again. Now let's zoom out and see what we've accomplished. Our insert and vector are ligated together. At the 5' prime end, also known as the front, we've got the two EcoR1 sites have stuck together. In the middle, the XBA and SPE1 sites have stuck together, creating a new sequence that is recognized by neither. Effectively, there is no special restriction enzyme site in the middle. Then at the 3' prime end, or the back, uh, we have the original SPE1 and PST1 sites of the vector backbone, which we never cut. Now you can see the awesome power of BioBrick cloning. The product of two BioBricks is itself a BioBrick. We meet all of the standard criteria. Four restriction sites, two at each side, and none in the middle. That means we can reuse exactly the same process to clone this BioBrick and so on and so on for as many biobricks that we might want to stick together. Because the process is standardized, we never have to think about it again. Most of the cloning that you see will not be biobrick cloning. You'll see other sites that are not standard being used here and there, more or less ad hoc, depending on the needs of the cloner. But I like to show biobrick cloning first because it's a, it's a neat example of the power of standardization, but also because it illustrates all of the key concepts of restriction enzyme cloning that are practically universal. We use separate sites at the front and back of the DNA to make the cloning directional. We need to be aware when two enzymes produce the same sticky end so that we know which pieces of DNA will end up ligated together. And finally, we're starting to see here how cloning can be an art and a craft. In general, when you clone, there'll be many strategies to choose from with different advantages and drawbacks. So until next time, stick with us and we'll make you a champion cloner in no time.